Hi YouTube, my name is Sean Connors and welcome back to Outsiders and tonight I'm going to be answering a question from Meta Roxwell. Now first of all, if you've not seen Meta Roxwell's channel please check it out. Um, I'm hoping that he'll link this, I'll try and link it to his video and obviously any of my subscribers do have a look at his channel. I think he's, the man shows a great deal of promise and uh, potential and I like the videos he's starting to churn out, they're very interesting, it's got me thinking and that's the best compliment I can pay someone is once I start to say yay I'm interested, this is good stuff. Pretty much you know it is. Um, anyway, without further ado, your discussion is all about cooperative world building. Can it work effectively? I think, in all honesty, um, if you know someone very well and have role played for a long period of time, then obviously you're on a better footing to be able to cooperate and collaborate on a world build together. Um, generally, I've started doing a lot of this, as no Sam has done with his own groups. I've started allowing them more into the cooperative process and allowing them more input into the world I'm about to create, which I didn't used to do. And I've done this because I want more buy-in from them personally. However, to try and cooperate with someone you don't know or do over distance is very, very difficult, and I don't think would actually work for a lot of reasons. It'd be very rare to find two individuals who can really connect, hit it off, and able to communicate over distance easily and freely to get everything off the ground. I'm struggling at the moment with my Leader Fanatica stuff, and that is a, a fancy, you know, trying to get people to cooperate, information, and it's quite tough to do. So what it would be like to world build with that, I really wouldn't say. I think it would be very difficult. Anyway, you then went on to discuss about living world stuff like uh, living Forgotten Realms, living Greyhawk, that sort of thing. Um, you talked about it in terms of, you know, uh, how those games came about. And you are right in some ways that obviously those worlds have been around for a while, particularly Forgotten Realms has been around a long time. And obviously they took it into a direction as a, as a company where they basically brought it to a time period where everybody was playing in the Living Worlds uh, universe and the way they interacted with it had an impact on other groups playing at that time. And that is quite an ambitious project, so it does make it feel more real. In a way, um, I think anyway, any good DM does that anyway. I think a good DM who builds a good world will constantly remind the players over many years various personal people that will crop up, NPCs, various personalities, things the players did in the past, the characters do in the future, all those things link well anyway. So I think it's a good step, but it, it really doesn't do that much in my view, never has. I don't think it's that important when you're talking about this topic of world building. Um, why did single adventures in the old days work so well? Um, well, this actually leads very well to the point that I would make for you, Men of What I would say is that I think if you wanted to collaborate world building online, like YouTube as a community, then there is one way you could do it. We start with a theme. And you ask the question here about why do these modules work so well. The reason they work so well is they were very organic. When they first came out, you've got to understand that the... It was still very much in its infancy, the game. Some core writers, key people who designed the game, came to the forefront of their creative juices. Now, Gygax is always the one that will always spring to mind. Every single module that he produced, for me, is a, is a brilliant piece of work because it inspired me to think more creatively. More often than not, not by the words that were said, but by the very ambitious way that the stories were put out. A great example is Keep on the Borderlands. It's a classic old famous story. You have a simple keep, you have people who live there, and nearby you have a collection of caves. Quite a number of them that can be explored. That just opens up the realms of possibility. And that's what I mean by starting small and building big. Why world build when really, as any good DM will do, it's better actually to do the reverse. In my view, for this community online, it would probably be better that we take a theme that people like, you know, maybe put, have a vote on it, you know, have about 10 or 12 good theme ideas, simple starting ideas around a concept, and then vote on that, con vote, uh, vote collectively which one we like. Whichever one comes out on top, that DM, that person's probably got an idea of a vision for the starting story. Allow them to write that starting story, and then that's done. Uh, collectively share that information, and then the next person steps in, and then picks the story up from that point and maybe develop the world a bit further, maybe develop the location a bit deeper. And that's how I would say we world build. Yeah. Now that ties in really well with why the, those modules worked so well, because they were organic, they made you think, they challenged you, and in this way I think they're very relevant for what you want to do here for world building. Um, my favourite setting, you've already touched on it yourself, it, without a shadow of a doubt, is Warhammer. It's the most immersive, the most the deepest setting I've seen. 
the history is superb. Um, the legacy of the game is, is simply how wonderful the whole thing sits together and the fact that it, it's so easy to get into it, you know, the role play, the personalities, to get into the various cultures, to find your feet with it. It was, it was something I instantly gravitated towards and I certainly still use it as a DM now in terms of it's always the thing that whenever I'm building anything or thinking about things, I always link it back in a way to Warhammer and thinking, you know, would the players be able to pick this up? Can it work, etc. And that's why I'm still going to gravitate back to my original point on this post, which is we keep it small and then build it big. That's my view. Um, I have to pick up my notes actually at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, you touched on some other questions at the end, but I'll be honest, I think the most important thing is obviously before I get drowned out, all right, Paige, we'll get you sorted in a moment, darling. Hold on one second, sorry. There you go, darling. There you go. Try that. Um, I'll have to bring it to a close, but to end it this way, um, long running campaigns can work if it's built big, aim high. So you build it small, but you develop it large. And I've always found that they organically grow with the players, which is what I think you're trying to do here. So that's my quick reply while I go and deal with my daughter, who is busy shouting down my video and, and getting very upset about it, um, which you would do because she's not going to be part of the design process. Anyway, thanks, Madam Roxor. Great video. Thanks very much for um, allowing us the opportunity to reply. I hope this has been of some benefit to you. And if it has been, then I have a suggestion for my idea for a starting point for, um, for building a world theme which would be a small idea, which could then be built much larger. So I would be quite happy to share that if you think it's relevant and you think it's worthwhile. We'll do it as a, a YouTube video very shortly. Uh, but I look forward to hearing more feedback from this and I hope other people will join us on the, the discussion around cooperative world building and things that we could do. Anyway, I've been Sean Connors. This has been Outsiders. Till the next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.